Hey everyone, this is Troy Eckerd. How you doing? I just wanted to give you a quick summary on a question we get asked quite frequently. Uh, the question I get from newer partners who are not familiar with the process of oil and gas and how the exploration side of the business works is they'll ask, you know, if minerals are so valuable, why don't the oil companies who have leased the minerals, why don't they go buy the minerals themselves? That's a great question because, you know, back 20, 30 years ago, I asked the same question. It's like, well, if you think it's a great place to drill a well, why don't you just buy the minerals, own 100%, and just keep it all? And the reality of it is, is that owning minerals, buying minerals is part of a large, broad uh, sector type of an industry. So no different than real estate. You know, you've got individuals who are in the business of buying raw land with the idea of entitling it and developing it. So it becomes either commercial land becomes residential lots. They don't build, they don't do apartments, they don't do management, they buy raw land and they improve it with entitlements to make it worth more. The same thing with a, uh, a vertical developer, somebody who wants to build a self-storage, an apartment complex, a residential community, they don't buy raw land. They want to have it saucered and blown and entitled and improved and annexed and all the utilities in place and then they want to buy it, pay a much higher price with the idea that they want all their money focused on vertical construction and the ability to have rental income and tenant income, et cetera. In the oil and gas industry, Exxon doesn't really buy minerals. Why? They're in the uh, exploration and they're in the refinement business. What they want to do is have somebody else lease them the minerals. They want virtually 100% of their money going into drilling because they're very good at exploration, knowing that for every $10 million, they can find $50 million worth of reserves. They want as big a chunk as they can of the ownership of the wells they drill because they rely on the expertise of their drilling and their exploration. So from that standpoint, it's always about um, the oil company deciding the best use of their capital with the skills of the intellectual assets they have with their company. We do see, and I receive from different oil companies in my revenue check every month, I might see a slip in there from Continental Resources that says, by the way, Continental Resources does buy minerals, or they do buy minerals. And the reality of it is, is they, they do buy minerals in some cases. That's just not the main core of their business. So the advantage is, is that we as mineral rights buyers and owners, we're kind of like raw land developers. We want to own it all, and then we want somebody else to pay us to develop the land. We want somebody to come give us a basically a ground lease and say, we'll give you a hundred year lease. You get all the income, you pay nothing. And at the end of the day, it's still yours, but we're going to do all the work, spend all the capital. Now, I know this may defy logic, but it really is the way the industry works. On top of that, when you think about minerals, you think about the fact that we are the landlord, it's all ours, and we're looking for tenants, oil companies who want to lease the right to develop it, spend all the cost. Well, there's a whole sector called upstream. That's just strictly oil and gas companies that start from the very beginning of seismic and geological reviews and geophysical analysis to determine where to drill wells. That's upstream. They want to drill, produce, turn the wells on. The midstream component is where they start picking it up at the wellhead and start collecting it, separating it, processing, transporting, and delivering it down to the refineries and all the different uh, gas connections that take gas throughout the United States. So most mineral owners are individuals or their companies or LLCs or the actual original owners of the land back in the land grant days, is it them or their families, right? Oil companies do have some money allocated toward minerals, but it's a very, very small, uh, innocuous amount of, of capital uh, that is deployed toward minerals. And what they're really trying to do when they do buy minerals, they're trying to increase their ownership percentage. So once they've drilled wells and once the wells are producing and they're de-risked, Oil companies like Cotton will say, yeah, we already own 80% of the well. We'd like to own 85% of the well. So maybe 5% of the mineral owners might actually sell to us because all of that just increases our balance sheet and increase the amount of reserves we can put on our, on our state. So this is a question many of you have asked. I thought I'd take the time to explain to you that we are in a niche that really is required based on cash, the ability to move, and the understanding that everybody has the role in the oil and gas cycle. Ours is to be mineral owners, to be the landlord, pay no cost and just get a ton of cash every month with those royalty distributions. Thank you for listening.